education and the race in when Africa awakes 126 through 28 in education and the race written in August 1920 for his book when Africa awakes Harrison considers the example of Russia with his mass education campaigns prior to its revolution as instructive for African Americans desirous of freedom and power he also discusses the example of the Japanese and Jewish peoples, the need for the talented tenth to come down from their Sinai's, and the need for his readers to get the reading habit and go to school whenever they can. And it starts in the dark days of Russia when the Iron Hill of the Tsarist despotism were heaviest on the necks of the people. Those who wished to rule decreed that the people should remain ignorant. Loyalty to interests that were opposed to theirs were the prevailing public sentiments of the masses. In vain did the pioneer of freedom, pioneers of freedom for the masses, perish under the knout and rigors of Siberia. They sacrificed to move the masses, but the masses strong in their love of liberty like the head to guide the moving feet to any issue. It was then that Leo Tolstoy and the other intelligentsia began to carry knowledge to the masses, not only in the province of Tula, but in every large city, young men of university experience would assemble in secret classes to instruct, teach them to read, to write, to know, to think and to love knowledge. Most of this work was underground at first, but it took. Thousands of educated persons gave themselves to this work without pay. Their only hope of reward lay in the future of effectiveness of an instructed mass movement. What were the results? As knowledge spread, enthusiasm was backed by brains. The Russian Revolution began to be sure of itself. The working men of the cities studied the thing that they were up against, gauged their own weakness and strength, as well as their opponents. The despotism of the Tsar could not provoke them to a mass movement before they were ready and had the means, and when at last they moved, they swept not only the Tsar's regime but the whole exploiting system upon which it stood into utter oblivion. What does this mean to the Negro of the Western world? It may mean much or little that depends on him. If other men's experience have experiences have value for the new Negro man movement, it will seek now to profit by them and to bottom the new favor of faith in itself with the solid support of knowledge. The chains snap from the limb of the young giant as he rises, stretches himself, and sits up to take notice. But let him, for his future sake, insist on, making, on taking notice. To drop the figure of speech, we Negroes who have shown our manhood must bag it by our minds. This world at present is a white man's world, even in Africa. We, being what we are, want to shake loose the chains of his control from our corner of it. We must either accept his domination and our inferiority, or we must contend against it. But we go up to win, and whether we carry on that contest with ballot bullets or business, we cannot win f from the white man unless we know at least as much as the white man knows. For after all, knowledge is power. But that isn't all. What kind of knowledge is it that enables white men to rule black men's lands? 
Is it the knowledge of Hebrew and Greek, philosophy or literature? It isn't. It is the knowledge of explosives and deadly compounds. That is chemistry. It is knowledge that can build ships, bridges, railroads, and factories. That is engineering. It is the knowledge which harnesses the visible and invisible forces of the earth and air and water. That is science, modern science. And that is what the new Negro must enlist upon his side. Let us, like the Japanese, become a race of knowledge getters, preserving our racial souls, but digesting into all that we can gleam or grasp, so that when Israel goes up out of bondage, he will be skilled in all learning of the Egyptians and competent to control his destiny. Those who have knowledge must come down from their Sinai and give it to the common people. Theirs is the great duty to simplify and make clear, to light the lamps of knowledge that the eyes of their race may see, that the feet of their people may not stumble. This is the task of the talented tenth. To the masses of our people we say read. Get the reading habit spend your spare time not so much in training the feet to dance as in training the head to think and at the very outset draw the line between books of opinion and books of information saturate your minds with the latter and you will be forming your own opinions which will be worth ten times more to you than the opinions of the greatest minds on earth go to school whenever you can if you can go in the day, if you can't go in the day, go at night. But remember always that the best college is that on your bookshelf. The best education is that on the inside of your own head. For in this workaday world, people ask first not where you were educated, but what do you know? And next, what do you what can you do with it and if we of the negro race can master modern knowledge the kind that counts we will be able to win for ourselves the priceless gift of freedom and power and we will be able to hold them against the world Racism is a mask, mask of the game, game of power. It is a business, a real business. Racism is a mask, mask of the game, game of power. It is a business, a real business. On this planet, there is only one human race. Black people, white, Asian people Are all the same people with a different culture Living in a different place on the planet Racism is a game All can have a rule Learn the rules but don't play it Education means power Get the power, be free. 